Hey guys, welcome back to another Six Sages Gaming video. Tonight I'm joined by Justin and we have our How to Play Intro Series uh, Exhibition Game, whatever you want to call this for Argent Saga. We're going to take a first look at it. Uh, I am playing the Dark Champion and Dark Spirit and Justin has the Water Champion and Water Spirit Well. So if you guys are familiar with the intro decks, these are literally just printed uh, and also available in the Argent Saga group. If you're interested and want to print them out, take them to your locals, all that good stuff. But Without further ado, hopefully you watch the other videos, we are just going to be getting into the uh, the cards themselves, talk about the towers, and get in with the game. So, at the start of the game, you do reveal your towers to your opponent. Weird rule, but it's a rule. Show that you have one of each, I guess. Shuffle them up, offer cut, all that good stuff. Uh, place them face down. Again, we're just going to be going through this a bit quicker because it's, well, us, but yeah. Make sure you cut all of your opponent's cards in a more official setting. You also have a shard deck because it's the intro decks, they're all basic. We're not going to take time to shuffle and cut these, but also you should be doing that uh, in a normal tournament setting as well. So, to start the game, we're both going to draw five cards. I guess we should probably determine who's going to go first first. Roll some dice here. Cool. I will go first. Uh, Mulligan in this game is you draw five, take any number of cards you don't want, and place them to the bottom of the deck. Um, I have actually a pretty decent start. I'm going to just put one to the bottom of the deck and then redraw one card. Do two. Perfect. All right, and then because I am going first, I'm not going to draw, but so it goes draw, charge phase, uh, and then into your main phase. So I will gain a shard. Um, and I do have a one drop. It's the failed golem, which lets me put a counter onto my champion. And then end my turn. Draw. <coughs> sure. I will cast Phantasmal Guardians, making yeah. two five lives. Well, two, five. 500, 500 Guardians. Yeah, those things. And Justin's Champion also has an effect that whenever a blue dude comes into play, he gets counters on it, and we'll get to draw, uh, basically loot through his deck. On my second turn, I will get to draw. So if you guys have played Force of Will, this is where it has a similar feel to it. You draw the card first, and then go into your charge phase uh, to untap and then call a shard. So if at this point I had something to do, pretend I had untapped shards, I could then play something else. But... Unfortunately, I don't, so I'll just gain my shard and go into my main phase. Uh, and that was actually a really nice top deck for me. I got my Golem of Jealousy. When it arrives, because I have another Golem, I get to draw a card. Um, and I know that he has two 500 Guardians. Um, and the interesting thing is that a Fire and Wind Tower are the ones that can be broken by a 1,000 power. So I'm just going to go ahead, go looking, see what he gets. Uh, and this does help my... Yep. This does help both my... Champion and Spirit get some extra towers for their, or counters for their effects. Sure. And then back to you. The interesting thing about towers is that when you declared an attack, so before it's flipped, you can't pump it or anything, so make sure that the power is what you want it to be before your opponent reveals. And then also, once a tower is flipped, you can't respond to it in any way. So if I had like a, a counter spell esque effect, I wouldn't be able to play it. Draw two, discard one. <clears throat> so I am playing a more um, value go wide strategy, and Justin has uh, more or less a very hard control deck. If you guys have played blue and other card games, especially Magic or Kai Judo, this will probably feel right at home for you. Uh, and these two decks are certainly my favorite of the intro decks. this stuff. So now I have an interesting choice here just with the information that's on the board. I could attack, try to poke one of these another towers again, but in this game, similar again to Kaijudo or Duel Masters, if I have an exhausted unit, he could attack with either one of his into mine because they're both at a thousand power, they would trade. Now the more interesting thing here is where it takes a slight twist, um, is that damage does retain until end of turn. So if he, if this was a 1500, if he could swing with 1,000, it would have only 500 health left, and if he had an effect, let's say, um, that did 500 damage, like the Fire Spirit, he could then kill it that way as well. So there's a few different options uh, when it comes to attacking and defending in this game. Uh, so I'm at three, and I am going to play your favorite card, the Golem of Allurement. When it comes into play, I get to choose a one-cost he controls and take control of it. Yoink. Go ahead and take that. Um, and... 
realizing now I probably should have just attacked first, and this is what I was going to do anyways, but I'm going to pretend that I didn't make any mistakes, and we're just going to attack here, and it's going to be a 1500 tower. And I'm right, so in this case, because I didn't have enough uh, power to break it, it just stays revealed. So now I know that he has a light tower in that position, and generally speaking, I don't want to attack that one because it's going to give him a blocker, uh, and also a very relevant 2000 power guy as well. So I'll pass back to you. <clears throat> what a fantastic card. I'm really waiting to see what set one brings for this, but it makes all of his blue spells cheaper by one. I'm going to poke that one. Sure. So I'll flip it over. Nope. It is the Tower of Dark, so it has 1500 defense. Go. Alright, so I will drop. Get these back a shard and then go into my main phase. So I have four. Um, well, drawing three of this card is not, certainly doesn't feel great. Alright, now we're going to go for some attacks because if he does hit the wind, I want to make sure we get that kind of uh, taken care of first. So we are going to attack with my 15 and we're going to go over here. Guardian block. Sure. So Guardian is going to redirect the attack. It only has 500, so this has 1,000 left at the end of the turn, and now I'm just going to continue on with my attack. So I'll use 1,000 and go with the same tower. <laughs> so another 1,500, so in this case it's not going to break either. Um, and then for my last one, knowing that it's going to be Wind and Dark, so I have a 50-50 here, if you will, at breaking one, so I'll go straight down the middle and try to get the Wind Tower. I am just not... Never lucky. Uh, <laughs> generally, in my very few amount of games I've played so far, I always want to find the wind tower early and break it, because late game you're playing you know, higher density uh, threats and saying they cost five or six drops, and you really don't want your opponent to bounce those instead. So now that I feel that I've done almost nothing with my turn, uh, I'm going to play a Golem of Avarice. Uh, when it arrives, you discard one random card from your hand. So just got to get my grabby hands on. Give me something good. Ooh, I got sleep. Uh, and then I'll just play another 1,000 golem. Good old, good old full field. So now you will notice I have all five slots filled. So at this point, I will have to sacrifice one of my other units to play something uh, in place of it. Back to you. Not being able to uh, hit units or towers here, rather, is a little bit mistaken. <coughs> Actually, before I forget, almost. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a comment about it, but because I destroyed one of his guardians, these should have one more uh, counter on them as well. I'm going to start poking that one. Sure. So it is another 1500 tower, Tower of Water. I'm going to attack that. Yep, so it will just die. 1500 versus his 2k. Again for free. Yep. You have all the guardian tokens. And I will put two there. And then your champion's gonna go up two. Go. Okay. So we'll draw. Get these back. Get a shard. <coughs> all the one thousand attackers. You have a two K guardian. I do need to clear up his board a little bit, so uh, we're going to go ahead and use Dusk Strike on his Guardian, which is going to give a negative 2500 power. I can only play it if I have a dark unit. I have one, a number of them. Uh, so now we're going to go to combat. I'm going to attack your last tower with the 1k. Hmm. And I know this is win, so I'm trying to break it before I commit anything else um, out of my hand for it. I will block the Guardian. Yep, so this is going to go up to 4 and 3. Uh, attack the same one again. 
do the second one. Yep, five and four. Uh, and then same one again. Six and five. And then the 2K is actually going to go at um, Good question. Actually, we'll send the 2K at the wind tower. That's fine. Sure. Oh, is that back to my hand? Back to yours. Yep. <clears throat> and then I have three open, so then I will play pay two for a blocker. And I'm just going to leave my last one up. I don't have anything too spicy to do, but keep in mind I do have six counters on my champion, so. Chances are I'm going to be getting some hasty boys, so to speak. Back to you. Start by scrap. Mm. Because up to three, I will use my counters. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, that's really good here. Uh, so that my card has a continuing effect that I wanted to die, and well, he just denied me the opportunity. And then I will guards again to make yep. two more fives. Then your boy gets more tokens as well. And then I will kill that. Yep. Go. All right. So before he gets a chance to uh, <coughs> sneak out of his turn, so to speak, and I need to grab more dice really quick. I'm going to create. Two tokens of my own golems. They're going to be 15 power. So this way they can attack uh, once it goes to my turn. All right, so I will draw, untap, and gain myself a shark. So I'm at six now. And that is a. Uh, is that worth it for a guardian? Probably not. Probably should just take the. Okay, so I'm going to swing with a 15 at your. Uh, we'll take your water tower. That's. Yep, stop. And both these go to six and one. Actually, before I swing that, I'm going to use my spirits effect to make you discard two cards. Okay. I'm going to go 15 at your light tower. Block with this guardian. Yep. 2k again at your light tower. That's fine. Yep. On my moving out of combat, I'm use Strike of the Golems. It lets me get two golems from my graveyard now with a combined cost of five or less. So I'm going to get back a Jealousy and I'm going to get back a Allurement. Uh, using this effect, I'm going to steal his guy and sacrifice this for placement. I'm going to steal your token. Oh, it's one. Yep, or one less. or less. That's rude. Yep. Now, I do want to mention, this is probably a good time for it because I don't think this has actually come up yet. Um, so there is a rule where you can, if you're summoning it, you can play over it, but I'm not sure if summoning... Um, with when you're taking effects or taking control. So hopefully a CR will be out soon where that can be clarified. Otherwise, um, it begs the question is, can I just remove my guy 
you know, off my field and then play it, right? To have a, a slightly different outcome, but have a 15 instead of the 2K that I would have had left. Uh, beyond that, those just came in, and I will pass back to you. And then, like our early, uh, look at, like our other early videos for trading card games before they release, you know, keeping in mind this game doesn't come out for another three months, so a lot of details are, are yet to be finalized at this time, but, you know, if we catch any mistakes, we'll definitely edit the video so after the fact. Trying to yep. discard it. <clears throat> Let's do a. I guess there, yeah, there's no good way to represent that. Nope, not at all. ARG, please give us tokens. <laughs> uh, bounce that to remove it? Yep. So, tokens in this game, right, when you bounce them, just like in any other trading card game, uh, they don't really have a zone to go to, so they just poof, vanish. Gone for good. Let's do 2K here. Yep, so 2K is definitely going to be enough to break it. Uh, I get a 2K. Okay, I get that card you just bounced back. Kill your water tower. Yep, so I will draw two cards. And here I'm going to hope to hit the fire. And you don't. Oh. You hit wind. <clears throat> um, I definitely bounce the guardian. Um, and I'll bounce here. Make spells cheaper, guy. Sure. I will pass my turn. I have a very strong feeling that there's a sleep coming my way. Or sorry, draw first, then do this. I would like to go to combat. I will cast. Shards yep. Winter. Sorry, it probably should use the official name. So Shards of Winter is the name of the card. It's a popular magic card, no sleep. I'm sure other games have also had very similar effects, but basically just I don't get to attack this turn. Um, now I could have like haste or stuff, right? And if I was a different color, but this one, I don't I don't got it. Um, these don't do anything. I will play over this though. And get my Favorite blocker in the world out here. Uh, then I have six uh, max card or max cards in hand is seven, so I'm under the limit, and I'll just pass back to you. Unfortunately, nothing I can really do um, in this situation other than try to play a blocker and you know keep some of my bigger guys alive, uh, knowing that he has a 2,500 on his board that can otherwise just pick off anything on my side. Turning that to your hand. Yep, that's, well, that's annoying. <clears throat> and I will attack the Dark House. Yep, let me see your hand. Uh, yeah. Because that card just straight kills me the next turn. And this way you know that the last tower I have is fire, which is going to kill something uh, once he flips it. Uh, that one. Yep. Bottom the biggest token. Makes sense. Go. Just goes away. Alright, so I'm going to draw. <clears throat> I have effects. Guess just one effect. You have... Just dark left, yeah. Um, shoot, it's a thousand either way. I'm going to use Dust Strike and uh, just make it a 25 of one of the bigger guys. Yep. Alright, then I will untap and get a shard. Oh, that's right, that one's also in only in battle. Um, what do we have from there? Not a lot. Another tutor boy. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and attempt to go to combat again. 
There we go. 1500. Soul burst to draw a card. Yep. Alright. 1500. Yep. 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 <coughs> Alright, and then I will get counters on these again. Swing at you for 15. Got it. That, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have <laughs> um, I drew the sleep. Ah, I drew the sleep with tapped out. So, there you guys have it. The games are fairly quick. We try to explain a little bit more as we were going through it, but um, I, you know, first impressions, again, for having the game for only a couple days of playing it, the dark deck is just absurd. Uh, I'm very curious to see what the first set has in terms of um, balancing out the rest of the elements. I think Wind is by far the weakest so far. Um, hopefully my opinion of that changes, but I played the Wind deck. I went to the locals yesterday. The other couple other people played the Wind deck as well, and it was by far their least favorite out of all of them. Um, and I guess my super spicy tech, if you got this far into the video, uh, I would definitely play Dark Splashing Water for the 10k ARG event. Um, I think just picking a couple of namely cards in water are really good, and then you have stuff like Sleep and the other bottom cards that can really help Temple in your favor. The only downside is this card and all the other Tower Avengers, or whatever name you want to give them, they're all one of. So yes, I do very strongly feel that you will need to buy two or three intro decks, because these cards are just um, absurdly good. Uh, there was rumors if there will be full art promos or something to sort down the line, but you know if you're going to that 10k event, definitely be prepared to be buying multiple uh, intro decks. So with that, guys, that is the end of our video. Hope you enjoy it. Justin, thank you again for joining me for another How to Play series. Otherwise, guys, content for this game is going to be a little bit up in the air still. It really just comes down to locals and, I guess, a bunch of other factors. But as time allows, I'll definitely be putting out more content for this and um, any other games you know that might be coming out in the near future. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next Six Stages Gaming video. See ya.